Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Information is given according to their ability to manage and process it profitably. In Jesus' ministry, there were three, Peter, James, John. There were 11, there were 12, there were 70. He didn't carry the 70 for major tasks. He didn't even carry the 11, he took only three. He had ministrations to the 11 outside of Judas. He had ministration to the 12, probably financial, about financial prosperity. Hmm. He didn't talk about kingdom, that one. See, that one doesn't want you to hear about kingdom. All he wants to do is steal money, money, money. He talked to the 70. He didn't explain mysteries to the 70. He explained it to the 11. If he explained everything to the 70, they would despise him. When he explains to the 11, he said, do you understand? They said, yes, Lord. They appreciate it. When he spoke about my body is flesh and my blood is drink, the 70 disdained him. So are you, are we going to eat you? The 11 did not. That message is not for the 70, it's for the 11. You must know what is for who. The fact that somebody is your neighbor and you see every day doesn't mean you open up to them. The fact that someone is your office and you are together on the team every day doesn't mean they are qualified or matured to hear about personal dealings in your life. Great people, according to the ability God has given to them. Praise God. Then you have any crisis in relationships, right? Praise the Lord. Like our daddy said, your husband or your wife is your first prayer partner. And you can discuss confidential things. She's not going out to say it. But when you discuss it with the assistant head of choir, <laughs> or the assistant head of ushery, or the assistant head of units that have no business with that, then you hear somebody else say, to say how did he get out? That's number one. It will help you manage relationships better. Am I communicating? Yes. Number two. In dealing with people in life. I have a principle in dealing with people in life. You must have a working principle to guide you in all relationships. I greet every human. I enter somebody's eye. I saw a six-year-old girl. She didn't greet me. I said, good morning, ma. Francis said, ah! Oh. She's a six-year-old. I said, that's how I greet everybody. Then she now said, oh, good morning, sir. It's okay. Her parents didn't train her to greet. But I have a policy. Whether you are young or you are old, aged or infant, I will greet you and I'll put sir or ma. It's my own working principle. If you abuse me, I will greet you. If you like me, I will greet you. If you hate me, I will greet you. So it's a policy, and it's a standard policy that douses tension. So you must have a policy with relationships. I have a policy. I don't send stinkers. I was talking to somebody on the phone, called and sent me a stinker from America. So-called father figure indeed. Mm. Nonsense. I did not reply, but it's in my phone. I've saved it. It's stored. One day we'll meet again. Remember the parable of the kingdom. We'll meet. But I will never reply. It's my policy. I will not reply you. If you abuse me, I will not reply you. Not with the phone. It's a policy I work with. And it keeps me safe in relationships. And you should adopt policies like that. No matter how angry you are, keep those itching hands off the, off the phone. What's up? I just, oh, my hand, delete. Don't, don't, don't. Have another policy. I will not talk to you when I'm angry. And if I cannot talk again, I will leave it. And I'll leave the judge of the earth to judge between you and myself. I will not talk to you when I'm angry. As I called the person, he said, you call yourself a useless man. He went on and on and on and on. When he got to his cell, I was trying to say, please, he just, I just cut it off. 
He said, you caught the phone on me. What a so-called father figure indeed. Nonsense. I called, I sent a text to the other brother. I said, your brother insulted me. I just said I should let you know. I saw on the WhatsApp, he read it. He never replied. I have no problem with that. What if I see them tomorrow? Good morning. Sir! I'll put the sir. How are you, sir? If he tries, I'll say, no, don't worry. Leave it. It's gone. Don't worry. Sir will be, it's a policy. I will put good morning, sir. If I use money to you, you are a heathen and a publican to me. I've completed the procedure before the Almighty. And before the throne of God, I've declared you a heathen and a publican. I must use sir. I must put good. At least sir ma. Even if you, I use it, even, I use for my brother in law. My wife said, how? Oh, it's my junior brother. I said, it doesn't matter. It's a policy. Have policies that shows some measure of humility. Am I communicating? Yeah. Number three. Don't treat a new relationship based on a previous one. No two human beings are the same. Each person must be given his own opportunity and treated uniquely based on your perception by the Holy Ghost. I've seen people who enter relationship and they say, in my last relationship, I was helping my fiancé. This one will not see shishi. That one stole my money. After I sent her to school, she now told me she's not doing it again. That's before. Me! Now, after I marry, I'll wait seven years and be sure she's not going anywhere. Then I will send her to school. You are treating this new relationship based on the old. It will boomerang. It will boomerang. And the person will have crisis. So don't allow a bad relationship to change you. You see people who have changed. Eh, hey, me. Before when I go to churches, I used to give. The last church I was, that pastor was a thief. Ah! May God deliver us from fake pastors. This pastor is asking for giving me. <laughs> Let him talk for money till the next day. Cow, he will not see. <laughs> Haven't you seen it before? You've not seen it. He's treating this new pastor who may be a son of God as the one that was fake, that was cheating and stealing. Praise God. And so many people have changed based on relationship, not based on the word of God. The Bible says, as we behold his face in the mirror, we are changed. That means you keep changing into the nature and character of God. Not people changing you into what they want you to become. And too many people have changed into what God did not design them into being. And they can derail easily of purpose. Because that character they've imbibed in themselves was not designed to carry them to the next to the, to the face that God has for them. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I say, I don't talk again, no. What they say if I talk now, my own is too much. Me, now we talk. Before I didn't talk, they cheated me. Now we talk and talk and then you talk wrongly. <laughs> oh, I've seen all sorts. I've seen so much. And I've seen people turn to a nightmare because of a bad relationship. Don't let people change you. If you are good, continue to be good. If you're nice, just learn from those relationships and be more prudent. That's all. If you're giving, give more wisely. If you're in a church where the pastor is a thief, a fraudster, and you were giving, and after you gave, they threw you out. <laughs> and you now come to another church, just say, lie here, I won't give again. They can't make it. I only come with my transport friend to church. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Open to the Holy Ghost. After all they did to you, the Holy Ghost says give. Give. If the Holy Ghost says don't give. Don't give. 
But the Holy Spirit will not say don't give, except it's a fake. Holy Spirit would never say don't give. The word says give. So the Holy Spirit can never say don't give. He said that pastor is not a pastor. He's a fake, an agent of darkness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Relationship is more about you and not the other person. They didn't greet me. Did you greet them? It's about your level of maturity, your level of tolerance, your level of fortitude. It's more about you. I can't stand those people. Very lousy people. How are you? Quiet. I hate passing by that street. Those boys will just sit without wearing any top. Just be looking at people anyhow. <laughs> You've not heard that before. I've heard all sorts. I can't stand that man the way he talks to his wife. And I don't go to their house. Can't go to the house of any man that shouts on his wife. Never! God is more concerned about you. What you have done. Not what people have done to you. He's more concerned about your response. That's why he said if they slap your right cheek, he didn't say, arrest. He said, turn your left. If they take your coat, give them your cloak. If they force you to take a man, walk with them, what? Two miles. If they don't greet you, greet them. If they don't give to you, give to them. Say so that you may be like your heavenly father who giveth his reign to the thankful and the unthankful. Be ye therefore perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So God is more concerned about you you, you, not others. My husband's mother is a terrorist. When she comes into this house, I will show her that I am anti-terrorist. <laughs> so as she's coming, yes. Now God is not concerned about your mother you know, there's a terrorist. He's concerned about you who is rude. He's concerned about you who has no manners. I remember a vision that I saw in the Lord Jesus. I, <laughs> this man was harassing my life in church. And as the Lord Jesus, I said, oh, Jesus, you have appeared very good. Ah, I've been looking forward to seeing you. You say, what is it? Say, I want to report so and so to you. He's been harassing me. Then I kept saying, he was just looking at me like this. Just looking at me. Just looking at me. Shook his head. I said, you are highly favored. I said, no, Jesus, you didn't get what I was saying. That's the son of God, Jesus, who was wearing white. I said, you didn't get what I was saying. I said, so, so, and so. All the work, he's not the one allowing me to walk. This one, I'm supposed to, didn't let me do it. This one, I'm supposed to, he shook his head again. I said, you are highly favored. Oh, I said, Jesus, you're not getting it. Can you imagine? <laughs> Till he got angry in the vision. And what he was saying is, you know, is it John 21? Peter came to the Lord Jesus. After they told him, Peter, uh, do you love me more than this? He said, yes, you know I do. He said, follow me. Then he said, Lord, what about that guy? That guy, you are thinking I don't love you. Does he really love you? You know what he said? You face what I called you to do and follow me. Leave him. If I would, he will live a thousand years, not your business. You are distracted about that man. Face your destiny. When she enters this house, I hear when she goes to the house of all her children, she takes charge. <laughs> Me, first, I hear all she watches is CNN. I've called the DSTV to cancel CNN. She will know in this house who is boss. She can harass other people. Jesus said, you follow me. If I problem is saying it, let her watch it. And you do what? Follow me. Really, it's all about you. It's not about that person. 
God is more concerned. And that's one of the reasons God loved David when he got to the camp of Israel. And he heard the noise of Goliath saying, send me a man. And David asked, what shall be done to the man that killed this uncircumcised Philistine Fida? He said, the king will give him his daughter. He shall be exempted of daughter. He said, I'm ready to go. His brother came and said, I know your stupidity, your naughtiness, your heady nature. Who did you leave those tiny lamp with in the field? You want to come and come and fight, stupid fool. You know what David did? He turned. You are not why I came. You are not the decider of my destiny. Let me follow it through. What shall be done? Ha! Huh? God said, I found a man. What shall be done? He didn't quarrel with his brother. He didn't abuse him. Is it not you that I brought food for? You people are so rude. I'm not bringing any food again. I'm tired of this. People. Nya, 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 nya. He said, what shall be done to the man that killed this infidel? You have been here 40 days. You can't face him. You are ready to face him. Don't block my pathway. Okay? God bless you. Next. <laughs> what shall be done to the man that killed this? He said, it shall be this. And the Bible said, while he kept saying, they rehearsed it before the king. If he had stopped to fight his brother, he would have lost out. He said, when they rehearsed it before the king, called Saul said, send for him. He said, I hear you confess. He said, yes, sir. He said, how? how well, you're a young boy. He said, oh, King Saul, don't look at my nature. One day, I was keeping my father's sheep. A bear showed up. He said, I took him by the bear and I slaughtered it. In your dream? He said, no, sir. In real life. He said, tell me more. He said, another day, a male lion showed up. He said, who? When the other shepherds around to him, he said, no, sir. There was nobody. I personally took his head with the hair, took his beard, strangled it, and I slaughtered it. Actually, he took a lamb and was running. I chased the lion. He said, you chased the lion? He said, yes, sir. <laughs> so what do you say your name is? David. The brother Eliad was talking at him. If you had such a connection with him, he would have missed this. He said, I don't have time to exchange words with you. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, 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 the king called Saul. So, hey, so what happened about the lion? He took the lamb. You didn't let it go. He said, no, God forbid, O king. O kingly forever. Can't take a lamb from me. He said, you must be a nice guy. He said, no, I'm more than nice. You chase the lamb. He said, yes, sir. He said, the lamb was running fast for him. I mean, he said, more than two miles. You didn't give up? No, sir. So what happened? I took the lamb by the leg, turned it down. He said, eh? So what happened? He dropped the lamb, wanted to fight me. So what did you do? Did you run? He said, no, sir. I took his beard. You took his beard? Yes, sir. Were you sleeping in a dream? No, sir. It was real life. I killed the lion. I still have his tooth in my bag. This is it. He said, give me my armor. He said, I have not proven them, sir. I will use mine. Say, this man that used ordinary small knife to kill lion, make it go. Oh, yeah? Let him go. And that was how purpose was achieved. A mismanaged relationship would have wrecked it. It's about you. Not about Eliad, who is coming to abuse you. Not about any other person. It's about you. When they abused you, what did you do? You abused their back? You told that woman, elderly woman, 70, you too. You didn't tell your children where. That's why they would take your. What was that? What was that? Jesus. Say so after we say it's about me. Me and God. Not the other person. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. The Bible enjoins us in to live peaceably as much as we can with all men. It says live peaceably as much as you can. So that means there are one or two people you may not be able to live peaceably with. Some people can be very difficult and just unbearable. Where there is a dispute, there's a procedure to follow. In Matthew 18, from verse 15 to 18, he says, Try and settle it first one on one. Don't take it beyond the two of you. 
even in a breakup, always leave room for reconciliation in the future. Don't shut your doors completely. You just never could say. The prodigal son and the father, though they parted ways on wrong grounds, there was room for the prodigal son to return. In Luke 15, 11 to 32, they did not part ways by cursing and abuses. If they did, the prodigal son would not have returned. So you're a useless father. You're useless. So I disown you. Who told you to disown me? Did I? Did, do you even want to bear your name? Look at this old wretched man that refused to die all this way. I've taken my portion. I don't need you. Can you return? No. 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 Always. That's why I never part with abuses. Never part with insults. Try as much as possible. I can't live with this person. It says as much as it's in your power. It's no more in your power because the person cannot just be lived peaceably with. And there are people like that. So part ways in such a manner. And my advice to you, respect everyone. Not only the rich, respect the rich, the poor, the great, the small, the mighty, the weak. James 2, 1 to 9 says that. God does not show respect to persons. He has his parameters with which he works with everybody. And I say to myself, until you prove to me that you don't deserve any respect, I'll respect you. Until you prove to me you don't deserve any respect. It's easy to live peaceably in this world if you imbibe certain parameters. That doesn't mean you and everyone had peace, no. But then, you are not at war with anybody. Now, you can't stop people being at war with you. You know that people can be at war with you just because you dress well. Who does she think she is? Now dress, look at, what's wrong with her? Now wear shine and everything, feeling good. There are people like that. So now that he has married her, he now thinks he's set with Abby. So he thinks we, that we're normal. See the way he's talking about his wife. Now I came told the microphone. Say, I want to first thank my wife. <laughs> and they're angry because you're doing that. Maybe because they are yet to be married. Rather than rejoice with you, they are upset. I don't know why Pastor gives her the microphone. Eh? She just believes when she holds that microphone, feels as if she's confident and very confident. Of course, she's <laughs> confident. <laughs> I don't know what pastor sees in her. They didn't say you should make them love you. You love them. And they don't have to love you in return. Jesus loves everyone. Does everyone love him? No. You can't be killing Christians and say you love God. It's not possible. You hate God. Because no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You can, not everybody agreed with Jesus. Not everybody has to agree with you. They abused Jesus. Jesus said, if they abuse me, your master, they will abuse you too. So, abusing you is not new. Getting jealous of his miracles, getting jealous of you is not new. Speaking against you, they spoke against Jesus. Speaking against you is not new. Gang up against you, they ganged up against Jesus. Gang up against you is not new. What God is concerned, hey, are you still with me? Are you depressed? There's no place for depression for a Christian. Because everything about your life is God and you. Not even God, you and your husband. God and you first. What he has done for you. What he has done on your behalf. The pains he went through to save you. The things he has freely given to you. There's no room for depression. The joy does not lie in the hand of any mortar. 
lies in your relationship with God. And don't let any man steal it. Or Satan steal it through any man. Love them. But please learn a clue from David. He didn't abuse Eliab. He said, what have I done wrong? Is there not a cause for what I'm saying? Right? And Eliab continued. And he just turned. And continued his mission. And those are the kind of people I call focused that God is looking for. I was planning to go to America and then I would do this, I would go to school and I will go to, but the way they spoke, I didn't know the one that would enjoy, I'm not even going again. Ah. Ah. I didn't know the one that would enjoy all the things, I'm not even going again. Let everybody suffer. Do you know that there are people that don't love themselves? That's why the commandment changed. Before I said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But I guess God found that there are so many people that don't love themselves, right? Someone that is using drugs, does he love himself? No. The Bible says how great are the thoughts of God towards us. That all the sand of the seashore, cannot, that's Psalm 139, cannot measure to it. Then what is he thinking towards us? In Psalm 8, um, Jeremiah 29 said, my thought towards you are of peace, not of evil. In Psalm 8, he said, he talks about how God is mindful of us. Do you know there are people? Because maybe their mother-in-law is coming next week and they don't want to do something, they wish they are sick. Ah, well, I just pray I'm just sick by that time. So that they, me, I will not me care. They are looking for who to use. Who to use like a, like what? Like maid. When they find me in hospital, can they use me? Now, is that one wishing himself well? So, can that one love somebody? Do you know that God has never thought once that you should be sick? Not once. You are the one that's thought to be sick. You are the one in anger to your husband. Say, let him come back. I know what I'll do. <laughs> when something bad happens to you, he can't, he can't send me again. I will say I will go. You are wishing something bad happens to you so that you won't go for your husband, so that they won't use you like they used to use you. You've not seen it before. Can that one love anybody? God said you can still love the way I loved you. Don't love him the way you love yourself. <laughs> love him the way I loved you. You can have a wonderful relationship with people. You can be on top of all relationships. You can have no issue with God when it comes to relationships. You can manage relationships profitably, peacefully, prosperously. You can be at peace with all men. That doesn't mean all men are at peace with you. That's not what the Bible says. Say you be at peace with all men. This say, and all men be at no, 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 no. All men were not at peace with Jesus, but Jesus was at peace with all men. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information or how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.